All right, everyone. Welcome to this uh, experimental live stream. I'm gonna be fixing some things in my um, systems and hopefully make them better. Um, um, the main package I'm going to be fixing today is this one we're looking at right now. It's abbreviated to M, but it's basically my synthesis library. Um, there's some things that I want to tune in it. Um, we're listening now to the to this library actually, but I just added some uh, synthesizers to the library. Um, Faust-based synthesizers, and those who don't know, Faust is um, this domain-specific programming language for sound that you can use to generate Super Collider plugins with. And uh, we recently published a um, well, not published, but we uh, added a, a really great tool to the Faust uh, distribution uh, called Faust2SC.py, which makes it really easy to to compile and install plugins for Super Collider. That's good. Well, anyways, these strings that we're listening to now are actually string models based from based on the the stuff from the Faust library. And uh, yeah, so I added some synths to my little system here. Yeah, this is what my system basically looks like. You have these source functions um, in this uh, synthesis library that I'm creating. So I basically make a source function and then you can see that they basically are just very simple. Um, simple kind of uh, synth def ish, -ish uh, functions uh, and all these do is basically call this these um, eugens that I've generated using Faust. Uh, so I've got uh, I think five different four different string models from physical <coughs> excuse me from the physical modeling library in Faust and these are basically um, just reworked uh, versions of the demos that come with the library and eventually I'm gonna add some of my um, my own design uh, but what's uh, really cool about the li library in Faust is that you can uh, you can actually um, create your own string instruments uh, and it's it's pretty <laughs> It's pretty impressive. Not only string instruments, but generally physically model instruments. So you can take like a, the board of a guitar and then plug it into a uh, body and then plug that body into another board, I guess. Uh, and then decide, do you want steel nuts and you know all this kind of stuff. Um, it's basically very futuristic things. Yeah, anyways, I've started to use these string models because I think they're great. And... Um, now I've added them to my library, but I'd like to do stuff to make it easier to install them. Um, so I've got in this monstrous class that I used to um, keep track of all of these things in my synthesis uh, library. Uh, I've got this uh, kind of crappy, but pretty good still. Uh, method that I can call and this will install all of the external uh, dependencies I need uh, on an arch based system so this won't work on Mac or anything else that's something I need to fix as well but uh, I really want to I really want to create a um, to start by creating a method here to um, well a method that will Make it easy to compile and install these uh, Faust plugins. So you can see now this is the root of the um, repo, and I've added a folder here which contains a lot of .dsp files, and this is the file format of Faust. I'm going to start by creating a method for. This. And in the background, I'm basically just gonna let this uh, pattern go while we work on it, just so you won't, won't be all bored to death. 
have this pattern going um, using one, uh, two of these uh, models right now. Um, uh, yeah, it's quite nice. I'm, I'm very inspired by uh, Korean uh, court music these days. So this is this is uh, Gugak uh, inspired. Kind of has this en endless quality. I guess works well for this stuff we're doing right now. Okay. Let's see. So this uh, package has a path. And that's actually going to be very useful. Let's see. Post it over here. Still. It's going to be so. Here. If I could just go this, and it will actually return a path name object, which is what we want. Okay. Oh, now I got the path to the these Faust files, and now we need find out. We install them. We will install them in platform extension. This is this is a pretty nice place to. Um, install things and I think I'm going to eat a folder well no first I'm gonna make this into a path um oops. the hell am I doing how it works this is how it works Aha. Okay. So I'm um, using these path name objects all around because they are very, very flexible. Um, so instead of just hard coding things in, in a string, if you put them into these uh, path name objects, um, if you put your paths in the, into these, you get a lot of things for free. Um, so you'll see in a moment that, for example, we can look over this uh, folder find all of the files. I'll actually I'll show you this now. Let's see. Script here, P let's go P files. Yeah. Here you can see it's found all of these DSP the DSP files in the folder. That's pretty neat. My opinion at least. Um so and yeah path name is just one of those objects that you I'm just gonna make your your super collider programs much more robust. Uh, really recommend getting into. It. So, anyways, here we have a path that we will use to install these plugins, and let's say create a subfolder in the extensions directory. So. The extensions directory, where you would put SC3 plugins, perhaps if you were installing them manually. 
Uh, and this is the user uh, version. So there's a user user extension here in the home folder, and then there's a system one, which is in system folder that's a bit more locked down and not specifically connected to your user. This is, and and this is nice because this is where all the other quarks and stuff are. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had a bit of a sore throat. Spent most of 2022 being sick, actually. But I'm pretty healthy now. Um, just coughing a bit. Okay, let's see. Use extensions there. Yeah, so I want to create a folder in here where we will install the plugins that will be generated. Let's call it... Uh, Hey, maybe we should actually just install it in the folder of this package. Not sure if it will be picked up uh, like that. I think it will. Okay, let's try that first. So, say Faust file path. So we'll put this in the folder of all of the Faust files that we just saw. But then let's make a subfolder called... Uh, Compiled. This is where the objects will go. Yeah. Hopefully this will work. We'll see. Um, and let's check if that folder exists. If it doesn't, let's create it. I like to use this scratch pad um, plugin that I made for um, NeoVim to test out these kind of things because we're working in the class now. So we actually have to recompile before we can test out these changes. And uh, sometimes it's just easier to use this scratch pad. So excuse me if this is a little bit um, confusing. Let's see. Compiled. So one of the things you can do with uh, path name as well is to see if things exist. Not do anything. No. Exists. Exist. Let's see. Path name. The help file. Ah, no, it's not exists, it's this folder. This folder. False. So it will return false because there is no folder, so it is not a folder. But then we say stuff like p if p is folder dot not, let's create the folder. Just in case. I can't remember if the Faust tool will create the folder for us. Uh, so let's just do it, just in case it doesn't. This is, will only be relevant, I guess, the first time you install this. Uh, if it's not a folder... Empire. Now I can't remember if path name as well as the one we used to make. Uh, 
file.makedf and string.makedf. Oh, this is from an, uh, an extension. Let's avoid that. File that make dear. Also from an extension. <laughs> File system. Looks like this isn't from an extension. It's file system up. Create a directory at path, including any missing parent directory. Turn say boolean boolean. Cool. So this here. P say. folder okay actually let's see it actually did create this folder so the folder is supposed to be in faust compiled hmm let's see it says it created the folder does not look like it did These commands are not compatible with the your field. Primitive field. Wrong type. Hmm. Ah, still did not put this in. There it is. Compile. Directory is empty. Goody goody. Okay. And then we'll just add a little bit of context to this format message. And this. Dot name. This will take the class name and prefix it. And I think that's really helpful. And then let's just be even more nice to ourselves and say put it here and this will create a folder, but then what if it doesn't create a folder? then probably it already exists. Let's the world know about that. Folder for Faust plugins exists. Okay, so that's the folder sorted. 
Faust files. Faust file path dot files. Okay, it's the now for each of these files we need to compile. How do we do that in the least crazy way? Uh, so us to sci.py this is the tool we're going to use it's the help page for it takes start constructing this this thing so the base is faust.sc.py to sc.py then T is the target folder. Command. That and then target folder is is the installation folder. Full path. Let's fix this. P is full path of. Oh, this is pretty stupid. Change this to full. Full compilation path is installed. Folded at full path. By the way, what you just saw there was a uh, refactor renaming of uh, a variable within Super Collider in a very fancy way. And that's, uh, that's uh, on account of um, tree sitter. So uh, it's pretty cool, um, really helpful for things like this. Sometimes it's not so precise for some reason, maybe because uh, the tree sitter grammar for SuperCollider hasn't been fully complete until, until now, basically. But uh, yeah, it works pretty well. Let's see, P is folder, if installation folder is folder. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And then here we can just say compilation path. So this will compile a file. T is the target. This is the full compilation path. We need to put in a file name as well. This will be Faust file. Okay. might be I'm wondering if the smartest thing is to do a for loop over these files within super collider or pass those files to a terminal and then do it there let's do it from super collider Just to keep it clean. Um, maybe we'll regret it. Let's put this inside of a do loop. Faust files. Do. Then we can 
can say. Well, that's cool. Ah. House file compiles it to this target. Okay. Then let's see, we will have to run. I can never remember. There's two different or a few different methods you can use to run uh, terminal commands or shell commands from within SuperCollider, and I keep forgetting which one to use actually. Use need to get standard out. Actually, cannot run. executes a Unix command asynchronously using the standard shell. Guess we'll just use Unix command for now. Six. No run command. Maybe should add actually an, another test here to see. Sometimes these Faust files will pr produce a lot of junk inside of the folders where they live, so they might produce files called that's called that CPP and JSON and a lot of other things. And we don't want to try to compile those files the next time, so maybe we should add a check here just to be sure that we're only compiling the .dsp files in. Here. Uh, and for this, we will use the path name object. Let's see. Now, this is the. What is it? Suffix? No. Fuck, I can't remember. What's it called? It's a method. File name without extension. Extension. Okay, here it is. So. Let's see. If we, for example, do. This. Now we have a Faust, a Faust file structure, and let's say Faust files do that extension. Just post them for now. Let's see how that looks. Yep, DSP, DSP, DSP. Okay. And then we can add a and then we can add a check. SP. True. Okay. This is the structure we'll copy in here. Um so let's say if Faust file dot extension is sp by the way, let's change this thing we're listening to. Change the octave. And I'm sick of this modular string. Let's try the nylon string. And guitar string. Okay. Can't actually. 
guitar string. Yeah. Okay, where were we? So we're checking if the extension is DSP and if it is DSP, we will compile it. <laughs> and we also need to, now that I remember it, add a ignore. Ignore here? Ah. It ignore. Faust compiled. So we want Git to completely ignore this folder. This is only going to be used by the user when they install this. And by user, I actually mean myself. Um, this is this is made for myself. Uh, but uh, and you could say that it's kind of over the top doing these kinds of uh, these kinds of things to uh, something that's mainly used for by yourself. But it's actually hugely useful, at least for me. Uh, you know, if my computer burns down and I have to set up quickly, uh, or uh, install it on another computer, whatever, uh, it, it can just be a real pain in the ass if if I have to like, spend time trying to remember what is the Faust command to install this and where does it go and blah 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 blah. Uh, and uh, I'm not gonna use this method that we're creating right now a whole lot, but when I'm using it, I'm gonna be happy for myself. I think, I hope. All right, so Faust file path. Okay, is there anything else we need? Down from the command. a supernova version. Yes, I guess we do. Yes. Um, so someone just asked, what are we building? Um, I am uh, working on uh, some system maintenance stuff for my synthesis library called uh, MK Synthlib. Uh, there's a there's a link at up of the chat. I don't know if I have to post it again. What's that? There you go. Uh, and uh, I guess it's just a pretty boring thing. I'm making it a little bit more robust. Uh, I'm adding um, Faust functionality to my library. So to make it easier for myself to just dump Faust files into the system and be able to compile and install it pretty quickly. Um, so this is, we're building a method right now that's uh, inside of my SuperCollider class here. And this will basically take all of the Faust files that we have in this subfolder in my project and create SuperCollider plugins for them and install them so that uh, they're always there. Uh, hope that that helps out. Uh, and then we're listening to these uh, some of these Faust plugins while doing this as well. Um, it's not the most action-packed uh, coding project, I guess, but uh, I mean these kind of things are important. Uh, you should uh, even when you're making something for yourself, I really think. Uh, it's important to make it as robust as possible. Uh, and it seems kind of ridiculous when you do it sometimes, but uh, it really is going to make your life a whole lot easier. Uh, yeah. So anyways, let's get on with it. Okay. If uh, this is a check, it's not a Faust file. Um, we want to post a warning if it is 
not have. Maybe we should. I have a tendency to create very verbose, verbose systems, so I use these like formatting messages a lot to uh, let the user, i.e. myself, know what's going on because um, these systems can get pretty complex pretty quickly, and um, and uh, it's really when things get very complex, uh, you really need to be. Um, uh, what's the word? I don't know. You have to do things properly and and kind of uh, be very uh, verbose about what you're doing. Uh, at least that for me helps when I just need to figure out what's going on, because uh, it gets really hard to debug these kinds of things. Because uh, uh, you can end up with like a huge system, and this is something I've done a million times myself. Uh, and then it just you get bugs all of a sudden where it just get an error it says uh, uh, cannot uh, uh, use method dot something on receiver nil and then you have to <laughs> seep through thousands of lines of code and trying to kind of like figure out why it's doing that and then an additional thing uh, you can do is add tests uh, and this is like one of the least sexy things in super collider I guess but uh, highly recommended this project has some tests um, that's really, and it's really good for sanity, uh, checking things, so it will, uh, these, some of these tests, for example, will run through all of the super collider files here and see if they actually return what they're supposed to return. Uh, and, you know, I have a lot of synths in here, so these are the, these are all the synth functions that I use, the base functions, so, you know, I have clouds, fm cloud, fm blah blah blah. And then here is another one, and here, even more here, and then even more here. There's a lot to keep track of. And then for each, each of those, I have a bunch of components that I use. They're combined with them. The envelopes, I have a bunch of envelopes here. A bunch of filters. And grain shapes, and blah blah blah. Anyways, these are like, this is pretty complex stuff. Uh, once you put it together, there's a lot of moving parts, and you need to be sure that, you know, when you call this file, it actually returns what you would expect. Okay. This is not correct. What were we supposed to post here? Warning. Yeah, this is a warning. Uh, let's say... Okay. Faust file.full full path uh, not a faust file skipping okay I think this method is pretty much done. So we are taking this path, Faust file path, subfolder with his Faust files. Then inside of that, we're going to make a file a folder called compiled. This is where the plugins should go and then the installation folder where they will be installed all the files if the folder does not exist we're creating it does exist we're just making user know it's to be nice and we're gonna run this iterate over all the Faust files. First we check that each of... well, iterate over all the files in the Faust folder and then check if... Uh, or uh, check it for each of them if they have the .dsp suffix, meaning they're a Faust file, and if they do, we're gonna compile it. 
let's actually make another. Just to be nice. Uh, and since we're gonna compile a lot of them, maybe it would be nice to actually just add a little spacer here. After the compilation. One thing I don't like about these models we're listening to now is that they kind of sound a little bit uh, tinny and crappy and low notes. I hope we can get to fix that at some point. So if we pull this up. You can hear it sounds much more uh, convincing. High notes. Anyways, let's see if this works. I'm gonna... well the music will die now. Uh, guess I'm gonna recompile to test this. So it recompiled. This means that we did not have any... Uh, syntax errors at least, or obvious errors in the code. And now let's... Try and say, I already forgot what the thing was called. Install Faust plugins. Okay. Let's say m dot install Faust plugin. Let's see if it works. Happening. Not immediately a good sign, is it? Done something weird with my scratch pad. See, this is the kind of error we want to avoid. Full compilation path is nil, installation folder is nil. Indexed slot plus list of path. Maybe it should just be path actually because it's a class method. You would think I could remember this kind of things after using Super Collider so much, but I can't. I am not a son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So path is nil. Why is path nil? It's because we haven't initialized. Path is set here. After init. So I guess we need to initialize. New. So this is how it works. I can create this library and say I want today I want a two channel version. I want to force it to rebuild all of the synth devs. And then it takes a while. You can see here on in the whatever post window, you can see how it just churns through all of these um, base functions with uh, sound sources in them and then combines them with different envelopes. And you see a warning. This is something we need to fix as well. Uh, different envelopes, different uh, filters. Um, and creates just, you know, probably thousands of different variations of synths. And they all pretty much work the same way, so it, it's very predictable, predictable for me how they work. And that's why I'm doing this, to make it easy for myself. Okay. Let's see. Let's try and install this stuff. Okay. Did not create folder. 
already exist. Compiling, compiling, compiling. There it goes. Compiling nylon string. Okay, so that's pretty good. I think it's done compiling now. This is, uh, I need to figure out how to make sure it's done. But anyways, I think it's done. Let's have a look here in this folder. So this was the Faust folder. And you can see here it's created a ton of junk. Uh, JSON files, we don't care about those. Then here's the kicker. Compiled, does it include um, the actual plugins that we want to produce? Yep, it does. So here you see for each of these Faust files, it's created a .so, that's a shared object. That's basically just a compiled uh, plugin. Uh, and then it's created classes for each of them. It's created help sources. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna run into problems the next time we recompile because we I already had these installed. So let's go ahead and remove the ones that I had already installed. Uh, let's see, this folder. Yeah, let's just remove. Post. I should actually get ignored. JSON. JSON. And if CPP files should happen to be in there, let's ignore them as well. Okay. Let's go back to. See, let's recompile. Okay, pretty good. Now let's go back and play this. Oh, crap, I recompile again. Uh, anyways, let's see. Let's initialize this library again. Oopsies, errors. Oopsies. I actually don't have a way to stop this thing once it's started compiling all of these synth devs. That kind of sucks, but I uh, guess we can't have it all. <laughs> all right, let's see. Error. Syntax error. Unexpected primitive name. Yeah, right. So basically, Super Collider is trying to uh, load .cpp files. Why the heck is it doing that? Um... So this is one of the things that's a bit annoying with compiling Faust thing. It's producing a lot of, well, it's not only annoying, but it's also what makes it cool. Uh, let's see, compiled. I don't really see where these things are supposed to be though. .cpp, where did it put these? Hmm. 
Where the hell did they go? Nothing? So I was saying this is an annoying thing, but it's actually what's really awesome about Faust. Uh, before I fix this error, I can just show you what some of these Faust files look like. Uh, this is this is the um, one of these uh, plugins. It's for uh, the electric guitar string, uh, and it's seventeen lines of code, um, most most of which is basically uh, interface. So this. You declare this like sliders and buttons in in Faust, and then uh, depending on uh, what your end uh, goal is, uh, it will be turned into something of a user interface. Um, and so this one file uh, for uh, which defines an electric guitar string, uh, I can compile this um, for Super Collider, which is what I'm doing now, or I can. Compile it for a uh, microcontroller like this one. I guess it's hard to see. Or a Max MSP or a VST plugin or whatever. And then these like sliders, sliders, they will be turned into uh, in Super Collider parameters. Uh, the buttons will as well. Button will become a gate, uh, and the sliders will become uh, a normal uh, parameter. So you can see. Uh, Plug position here will become plug position here, uh, all lowercase. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. But the way it does this is that it, the Faust compiler will take this file and then create a uh, optimized C++ file, and then with that C++ file, it will compile an actual object for Super Collider. Uh, and uh, that's pretty awesome. But um, these files may be kind of, uh, they're kind of all over the place sometimes. Uh, and uh, for some reason, Super Collider seems picky about that. I'm not sure why it would try to load a C++ file. Uh, what would be the point of that? Why would Super Collider try to load Hey, it's dumped it into the physical. Okay. Out of stilts. Physical. Here they are. Why the hell did they end up in there? Okay. All right, now, if we do this again. Mental note, by the way, I should make this uh, um, attempt to, ru to uh, compile a .cpp file. Uh, I need to make that into a bug at some point at Super Collider, GitHub, if it isn't already. Looks like there's some more crap going on here. Okay. Let's see, there was some... Exception, uh, not installed. Ah. Error while reading. While reading file, blah, blah, blah. That synth dev exception in graph dev load ugen k plus stack not installed. 
But saying the new gens that we've just compiled and installed are not installed. And I think I know why. So we've compiled the plugins and placed them inside of this subfolder inside of Faust. But I don't think that the class library will understand this, or maybe maybe it's some kind of internal path in in the shared objects that don't understand this. Um, but I do. Th I think they have to be in a. Um, inside of uh, a root folder like this classes this is where the classes should go and then maybe the shared objects here in the bottom so fortunately we can change that pretty easily just go in here and delete this first So we'll change the strategy instead of compiling this and putting this into the subfolder of this library. We will simply this. We'll simply create a new folder in the um, extensions directory. So instead of taking the path of this package, we will take the path of Um, that user extension Durr. and then add Faust. God, I really have a tendency to write long variable names. Let's see the Faust installation folder. Mco Faust. Mco synth lib Faust. I'm Then this will be the installation folder as well. Full compilation path. Same. So now. This is wrong. Faust file path. Yeah. Okay. So this is where the Faust files are for this project. This is where they're going. Putting them into a subfolder of extensions and creating a cute little folder for them there. Uh, now it takes these Faust files and does its thing. Okay, I think we're good to go. Compiled. So it was complaining there for a bit because it's still it's got some synth defs containing. Uh, Eugens that it can't find. And now let's go. Not sure what kind of bug it is that I just provoked in my Scratchpad plugin. Fix that at some point. Well, one bug at a time. This kind of sucks that my library takes such a long time to compile. Uh, I need to fix that at some point as well. And now it's not taking a huge amount of time uh, because it's only creating only creating uh, stereo versions of all of the synths. But it's also got the capability of creating high order ambisonics versions, and those guys are heavy, uh, heavy, heavy, heavy. Um, Okay. See? 
compiling. See, it's creating the folder and the extensions. Mco synth lib files plugins. Looks pretty good. Let's see how it's gonna like this. The only problem with this is it's gonna gonna be a pain in the ass if you uninstall this and it leaves. Well, I guess it isn't. You can use those compiled plugins without this library, I guess, once it's compiled. Not sure why it would. Uh, you can. Okay. It's probably done. Let's go back out here. This is the extensions folder, I think. No, that's the downloaded quarks. Extensions. And then here it is, MK synthlib Faust plugins. All right. Here we have the .so files, we have the help source, classes, and we should be good to go. Should. Okay. Now let's try and compile the library once more and see if it complains again. I don't think it will. Yeah. Okay, we have this C++ problem again. Uh -huh, we put it... Where did they end up? In here, yeah. This, this is definitely something that should be reported as a bug. I think... Well, it's not a bug, is it? Because this is actually the, the fault of my own library. Okay, I know why this is happening. We'll fix that afterwards. This is typical. You always, uh, uh, you know, start blaming it on other people, but it's 99% of the time your own fault. Uh, it looks like it actually did work. Nope. Did not find the nylon string. Huh. Basically. Okay. okay, so this is all of these models. Let's just manually run them here. Class not defined. Did we forget to? Well, yes, we did. A lot of recompiling. And Daniel is asking if that was the default synth, and yes, it was the default synth. I'm very sorry. I know that there's nothing in this world you hate more than the default synth in Super Collider. Uh, but yeah, anyways, it's uh, so when I'm calling this uh, pattern and it can't find the uh, the synth that I'm trying to to use then it's going to play the default synth and then the viewers of this stream are going to run away screaming uh, with uh, streams of blood coming out of their ears and uh, it's a terrible tragedy tragedy each time it happens <sighs> who knows maybe I'm going to end up in prison someday for that I'm playing the default synth too much it wouldn't surprise me Bingo was his name -o. Okay, it works. We have music again. So, let's see. This chunky method that we just made, it actually works. It does the job. So, that's that. That was this, this, I guess, kind of boring exercise in, in creating something um, convenient for yourself. Uh, and this is what it's all about. For me, this library, convenience. Uh, but anyways, um, we had this other problem where it would try to load these .s 
these uh, C++ files. And I think this is where it happens. Oh yeah. So this is where the library will iterate through all of these .scd files that I have placed in since. So each of these folders all contain .scd files, normal supercollider files. And um, they will then be loaded. And by loading them, you just call this .m.add, which will add this synth. But anyways, what I have not done here very clearly is check the uh, file suffix, as we just did with the... Um, uh, with the Faust files. Let's do that here as well. Uh, uh. And I actually also forgot that when you use path name, you, instead of doing, doing dot .files.do, dot you can actually just do files do. Uh, like really, I have to once again recommend path name. There's so many good things going on in that object. And then just to make life easier for myself, let's say extension if if da, da, da. Dup, dup, dup. I have to look down at my keyboard from time to time as if I was a thousand years old uh, and then I type these wrong characters because recently I've been using a Mac a lot and uh, it's been screwing up my brain. So now we will check that it's a .scd file. And if it is, we will load it. Oh, I actually forgot I made this poster method. Anyways. Skipping uh, because it is not a dot SCD file. <laughs> okay. Daniel is saying you should you're actually the person who taught me to change the default synth. I don't understand why you yourself would not change the default synth. That's uh, that's a good question. Uh, that's a good question. I mean, it's kind of like asking, you know, if you have this like electrical fence and and there's a sheep. You have sheep and they go keep going into that electrical fence and get electrocuted and you ask them why do you keep doing that? And I guess, you know, they can't answer that, answer that question. Equally, I can't answer the question why I haven't changed the default synth, even though I can. It's, I think it's a bigger philosophical question. This should do the job. I think. Now we can put crappy files inside of these synth folders and then uh, it should skip them and we should be good and i will not create a github issue on the super collider github because this is not a github issue this is my issue uh, let's see She's is writing Max are known to do that to one's brain. Next thing you know, you will come to like the default synth. <laughs> yeah, I think the secret is that I actually already kind of like it. It's uh, <laughs> uh, it's got a certain charm to it. I have to say, it really kind of. I guess I mean, if one would find some charm in the default synth, it would be that it kind of reminds. Me, at least, of those crappy uh, keyboards that you would have as a kid uh, in the 90s and whatever. Um, 
Anyway, let's just quickly test this out. Um, so, if this works, we can create a file here. File in a directory called crappy crap txt and then just put some junk in here and sorry i'm gonna cut the music now recompile and faust file not oh oh my god Okay, what do we call this? Crappy crap.txt. Okay, and let's see if it's skipped. Skipping crappy crap.txt because it is not a .scd file. Okay, so that, that should work now. I mean, an even better solution would be to not uh, have Faust output super, uh, C++ files in random places in your project, but uh, that is for another day and another stream, I guess. Um, the problem is that I'm also the maintainer of that uh, Faust to Super Collider <laughs> tool, so I would have to fix that as well. And right now I just can't be bothered because it works pretty well. Okay, that was pretty good. So let's just delete this again. And oh, we need some music. Sorry about that. change the root note just to make things a bit more interesting okay let's commit this stuff and before we do that let's add a to do here to do Post message. Is Ruti a typo? Ruti is definitely a typo if that's what I wrote. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it's definitely a typo. Let's try again. That's the thing about patterns. You won't get an error message if you get one of these keys uh, wrong. I guess that's up to some kind of optimization. Uh, when... Done compiling. All oh, plugins. I'm gonna fix this another day. Or maybe this to do will just stay here for ever. Uh, all right, let's commit the stuff. I also see that I have some crap going on here with my pole stretch synth. That's another thing that should be fixed. I'm gonna mk synthlib.se help. Nope, didn't touch that. Okay, these are the files we've been doing. Git ignore, main class, adding the Faust files. This, okay. Feature. Uh, Feature. Add install Faust. What's it called again? All oh, Faust plugins. Local Faust files. Yep, yep. That's pretty good. 
feel like that's a big upgrade. Now, I'm gonna push it. And if you feel like checking out the code, you can go to that. It's on codeberg.org slash uh, my name, Mass Kilgore slash, what is it? MK. Let's see. Codeberg. Mass Kilgore. MK stands. Yep, here it is. And so this stuff we just committed is on the develop branch. One minute. One minute from now. Okay, I guess we committed this in the future. That's pretty cool. I didn't know my library could do time traveling, but I guess it can. And once we fix some of the other bugs, I need to merge it into the main branch. This is, uh, is a big uh, helper for my sanity as well, because I use this library for uh, basically all of my composition work now and my performances, so it has to work all the time. And so I have a branch where I do these experiments, add stuff, add features, and then test them out for a while and see if they work properly. And then once that's done, I merge it into the main branch. The main branch has to always work uh, Always. Um, no more of this uh, showing up to a performance and then having to like frantically fix bugs uh, a few minutes before performance. At least that's the goal here. I'm probably going to do that anyway. Uh, but maybe less so. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to... I'm going to take a quick tea break and then be right back and we'll continue making this thing even better. Question is what to do next. I think there was yeah, some issues with this synth here. This is the this is one of the synths. It's um it's a buffer player synth. We're gonna i I'm gonna back to that in a minute, but if you noticed, it posted a bunch of warnings about that um, when it was compiling it, and uh, we can't have that. Things need to work properly. Uh, and I'll explain more about this in a minute. But uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna get a cup of tea. I'm gonna make some Japanese bancha. Um, be right back.
Alrighty. Welcome back. Welcome back. So I've started brewing some tea here. I don't know why I didn't drink tea from the beginning. It's, uh, you know, I was drinking a soda to begin with. It seemed like a good idea, but it can't have been a good idea for you guys to have listening to listen to my constant low volume burping caused by this soda. I should have drunk tea from the beginning. Always drink tea. Don't, uh, you know, don't drink anything else. Ever. Alright, this is my little Japanese teapot that I use at work, well, here in my office, and uh, I'm brewing some beautiful tea from Japan, Bancha tea, and this is this is from the autumn harvest, so it's basically just like the roughest material you can imagine. If I just pull out. Got these like twigs and stuff in there. Great stuff. Really beautiful. And, uh, yeah, tastes really nicely. All right. Okay, next problem on my to-do list here. So, as I mentioned earlier, this um, the system of mine has uh, has it basically consists of a bunch of these add methods. Uh, oh, that's how I use it. So basically, I have this M class. This is the main class, and then I add a synth source to that, and I give it a name. And then I put in a um, synth function, basically, like a uh, synth def. But it's only the source sound, nothing else. Uh, all of the uh, amplitude envelopes, the filters, the panning, um, that's handled by the library. So the library will then take this source sound and then say, you know, if I've compiled it for two channels, it will put it into a stereo um, panner. If I've compiled it for high-order ambisonics, it will put it into an ambisonics panner. 
And that's pretty great. Um, uh, at least I find that to be really nice. Um, I use this... Like also one of the reasons you know I'm doing this is that I can't I really can't remember how you know all of these UGENs work. I can't remember how especially external UGENs work plugins um, that don't come with SC3 or whatever. Um, but I still want to use them because they're awesome. Um, and uh, one of the ones that I'm using uh, is this one, and this is the one that's causing us problems right now. Um, I mean, the plugin isn't the one causing us problems. Again, it's probably myself. Uh, and it's this one, X Play Buff. It's a really cool plugin by um, Gianluca. Let's see, it's on El, is it El Giano X Play Buff. Is it? Oh yeah, I remembered it. It's on here on GitHub. Um, it's um. It's a fantastic little plugin. It's uh, Gianluca really did uh, a fantastic job uh, creating this. It's it's it basically a kind of like the same as play buff, you know, that you use to play buffers, but with some extra functionality. Uh, it sounds really nicely. It works really nicely, and there's so many cool little um, additions and fixes done to. The original play buff implementation. So I highly recommend that. And I use that in my library as well. Um, but it's causing us problems. And I noticed that the, the problem was that when we were... Um, when you compile the library, let's do that just again. Just for the kicks. You will see that it says warning at some point. When it comes to this X play buff synth. Yep, there it is. So it's complaining that it can't find... Well, basically it's complaining that I'm calling some kind of argument that doesn't exist. So I think it was this equal power one. Uh, oh, that sounded kind of cool. Um, the whole system was blocked from playing uh, events while while it's compiling this, so it's basically been stacking up events for 42 beats. Uh, thankfully, didn't explode. So this is the help file. Let's see. Oh, did I just, oh, I just cleared the post window. Now I can't see the problem. But anyways, we, we can figure this out. So we have a, uh, Argument called num channels. Yep. Buff num. Yeah. Rate. Yeah. Trigger. Yeah. Start pose. Yep. Loop dur. Yep. Loop. Yep. Fade time. Yeah. Hmm. There is no equal power or interpolation. Guess this is this has been updated. Maybe this is why. Back here, X play buff. Updated on December twenty fourth. Yeah, okay. So, I guess this is why those are removed. Is there a fix missing buff data check? Hmm. Wonder why they were removed. Cubic interpolation only. Okay. So, interpolation is not relevant. That's nice. I would never, at least I would rarely want anything else 
but cubic for this one, so that's that's all right. The next one was equal power. Two months ago. Huh. Maybe they were never there. I don't know. Equal power? Let's remove it. Let's add this again. Alright. No more complaining. Alright, just to take you through what this, because uh, this is doing more than just using X play buff. It's actually, I have a ton of these kind of convenience uh, classes that uh, do different things and uh, it may look confusing to other people, but uh, to me it makes sense. Um, these uh, buffer player functions have envelopes. Uh, to make it possible to use the um, oh, or not the but a envelope inside of um, the function, and so this will basically get the ADSR envelope that I have defined, and then prefix every single argument with pitch, so the attack becomes pitch attack, and the the decay becomes pitch decay, uh, and then it's fed the duration of the outer synth um, to to scale the length of that. That's pretty clever, in my opinion. Um, and, um, uh, and yeah, I really love pitch envelopes, so why not do that? And then, let's see here. Pitch envelope amount, yep. And then it starts calculating the rates. This is the direction. This can either be one or minus one. So minus one will make it play backwards. This is the base rate that's fed into the synth by the user, and then it's scaled by the the scale of the uh, buffer. Uh, this is the sample rate. So if it's running in a different sample rate than the system is running at, it's gonna be scaled, scaled accordingly. And then this is the pitch envelope. This is the one we got here, and then it's gonna scale this pitch envelope, so it scale from 0 to 1 and then to something that makes sense according to this uh, pitch envelope amount here. Then we add some wow. Uh, this is kind of to emulate a um, weak motor on a tape recorder. And then all of this is put in as like the final rate into the X play buff. Uh, but anyways, let's see if we can test this out now. Gonna test put it temp test paper city and let's say we need a buffer. I think actually, actually this package comes with the sound. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Sound path. Okay. Eight limb buffer read. It's uh, m that sound path. Dot full path. Slash s and d could not be opened. Format not recognized. S and D. Yeah. Choose one of the files. Arm short. The wave. Just stop this string. Here we have it. Let's play it. It's loud. 
But anyway, it's good enough. So if we uh, want to use this X play buff synth, call it like this, and we get the base name is X play buff, and then a number for the number of channels in this file. Some channels. Two. Okay. X play buff two. And it's got a filter and an envelope. It's fine. This is the synth name. Let's call the synth like that. Then buffer B. God. Uh, B. Yep. Let's say ADSR. I'm going to use no filter. Okay. It's to work. Uh, let's see. Let's put in the pitch and the amount. Of which end uh, maybe it's easier to try this out in a pattern. Okay, pattern if. Find type M so type M. This is uh. An envelope, envelope type, event type that I've created for my own convenience as well. So um, this is basically just uh, just contains a bunch of shortcuts that I use. Makes it a lot easier for me. So for, for example, if I write attack like this, it will propagate into the correct name for the synth. So I can write attack like this, attack like this, and so on. Uh, and yeah, it's, uh, really, it's really helpful because I can never remember if it's one or the other. And now both works. Okay, base name, X play buff two. So, filter, done. There, one. Wait, zero point five. Okay. Put in the buffer. Hold up. Why is it doing this? So is this not loaded? Yep. Then. Base, filter, and base. There it is. Okay. Let's say let's test this pitch and for mount stuff. Yep. the direction at zero one and 
then, I guess as I said, it's passed through a panning function. We can actually also use the panning. Yeah, seems to work. Yeah, I think that's fixed. Let's see. Stage this change. Fix play buff. Fix. Uh, Move unused X play buff. Okay. Okay. Next on the agenda is this one, I think. This should work, but it's not working. Yep. Granular all stretch. Go back into drafts. All stretch. This is the drafts folder is where I keep all of these synths that are kind of like not working so well. And this got moved in here at some point. Uh Um, this is a pole stretch, um, time stretch synth that uh, was taken from here. See. Glaciers by D.W. Tong. Thanks, D.W. Tong. Um, this is a nonce uh, synth. That's really cool. And it's basically implementing the, um, or something that sounds like the, the classic pole stretch, time stretching algorithm. Uh, and uh, these nonce. Um, apps or whatever they they basically a uh, have kind of these lua scripts as their front end and then a library file containing uh, a super collider class and so uh, i've basically taken this and repurposed it a little bit and this is the result and basically the result does not work as far as i remember uh, okay let's, let's try to Compile this. All stretch, okay. It's adding it fine. Um, now I think we actually need to a mono. Yeah. Okay. Stretch one instead. Nothing. So it's, whoops, what the fuck was that? Okay, that's pretty creepy, uh, what's going on with this synth. I'm not sure if this is fixable, but it's creepy is what it is. This is going to be difficult because I did not actually write this myself, but stole it. And that makes it even harder. So let's see. 
Let's say collect. Oh, green buff. These, uh, with all due respect to all of these, uh, the, the plugin authors that, uh, legendary plugin authors uh, that made these buffer uh, or grain um, plugins that come with SC3 plugins, I just, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm an idiot, but it just, I, it, they screw with me every time I try to use them. And it's probably just because I'm an idiot. But um, there's a lot of like implicit things in these plugins that, you know, it won't tell you, for example, if the number of input channels is wrong. And that confuses me quite a lot. And some of the help files, this actually has a nice help file, it seems. But some of these grain help plugins don't have any help files at all. Number of channels to output. Okay, num channels. This is what we get here. So this expects. One channel. Next argument is trigger. Trick period. Sound buff. Rate. Position. And then interpolation is basically ignored. Um, envelope buffer. It's screwing with me here. Nope. Not it. Perfect size. Time stretch times scale which 100 scale window did any of these default Panning. Not panning, is it? Just mixing. Okay, let's see. Let's try just commenting out the good old classic commenting out things, debugging strategy. It's not something we should do as grown-ups, I guess, but here we are. Here we are. Not do it. Bad pass? That be it? Really? No. Delay. Come on, delay. You can't... Can't be you, can it? <laughs> this is running cubic interpolation on this delay. This is actually unnecessary. It, yeah. The cubic interpolation is basically something when you when you have uh, delays, you they, it kind of interpolates between each point in the 
in your uh, block, and uh, that's really useful when you're modulating uh, a delay. Um, it's not only useful, it's necessary, because it sounds like crap if you don't. Uh, but since this is not being modulated, uh, this is a fixed value, it seems. We can say delay n instead. This will make it uh, use no interpolation, which saves us a bit of uh, processing. Delay second grain by half a grain length or superposition. This seems... Hmm. Yeah. No. About to say that it seems sketchy, but it is actually isn't because the position, making two positions here. Mm. Got it. God damn. <laughs> let's okay, let's try commenting out this FFT stuff. Yeah. So it's something going on inside of this FFT stuff. And to be honest, I'm not too crazy about the FFT stuff in Super Collider. It's, uh, I've, yeah, it's buggy. That's what it is. Um, I normally don't really use it. Uh, this is used to randomize the phase using the diffuser. PV diffuser adds a different constant random phase to each bin. When triggered, it selects a new set of random phases. Takes a buffer. chain and then trick one minus trick one minus trick what is trick it's an impulse is it one minus it's strange let's try something Why is it saying wind type minus one here? And remove the maybe things will explode. Nope. And next one. IFFT. Wind type zero. Type. Wind type defines how the data is windowed. Minus one. Rectangular windowing. Simple but typically not recommended. Okay. Zero, the default, sign windowing, typically recommended for face work, vocoder work. One, hand windowing. Uh, maybe we should try not using the not recommended one, if that does the job. It does not. Um, okay, stuff going on here as well. FFT buffer divide. 
buff, but this buff. Up one. Up one. Okay. Sick collect dur item. Duration item. It's very strange. Ah ha ha ha. That's it. That is it. Bet it's gonna work now. Yeah. Okay. Again. This was not some other person's fault on the internet. It was my fault. Uh, I had done some auto... Um, I, had, I had to add this duration parameter to all of these things, and apparently I added it in here, and now it seems to work. Um, it's pretty good. Maybe we can do some other improvements to this synth. Uh, but let's first tr test it out properly. Okay, now we're using pole stretch one and duration four, and then what? Arguments do we have? Have stretch scale. Okay, stretch. Stretch scale or pitch mix, why not? These hmm. I say that it works, but it does actually sound pretty bad. And why is that? Is it sounding bad? Pretty sure that the... Um, so I copied this from uh, the uh, the other project and I did that because it sounded really nice and the person had done a great job and I probably, probably screwed it up even more in the process. Oh, you're not hearing any audio output. It's very, very low. Uh, super quiet. Um, let me see. So there you have it. Sounds pretty bad. Maybe it's the time stretch. Maybe it's too much time stretch. Uh, just say 10 instead of 100. I don't know, is this how pole stretch is supposed to sound? I don't think so. So, let's just mess around with the parameters a bit. Trick rate scale. Okay, trick rate scale. You've got a lot going on for yourself. That was quite cheeky. Still sounds kind of strange. Yeah, someone in the chat says it normally sounds better. I agree. 
I honestly haven't used pole stretch in a while, but I do remember it being a lot more smooth than this. Mm. Aha. Aha, aha, aha. It is probably because... Um, um, again, something I've done. So, uh, in, the, in an attempt to be clever, uh, I have this thing here. This uh, will pull in uh, like a small sub-library I have of envelope shapes. And it will um, use... Uh, well, it will embed them in the synth so you can choose between different kinds of uh, granular shapes. And that's pretty nice, at least on paper, uh, because, because then I can define my granular shapes in one file. Let's pull it up, actually. I can define all of my granular shapes in this file uh, and reuse them everywhere. So I've got sync, quasi, uh, three line segment, Welsh, triangle, uh, exponential decay, click, hamming, hanning, Gaussian, reverse exponential decay, percussion, and sign. Uh, but anyways, I think that what we're hearing now is actually that it's defaulting to using sick, which uh, I don't think is a uh, very um, very uh, very good grain shape for uh, time stretching. Uh, let me just see. Let's see here, pole stretch. Let's see here, this is the controls. There should be a grain shape. There it is. 0 0.5. And are there any other strange defaults? I'm stretched. Window. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Grain shape. Grain shape. Grain shape. Zero. Sounds a little bit better. Yeah. That was the problem. So, uh, let's try and make this a bit longer so you can hear it more in action. Uh, let's say he ran the stretch factors, so it could be 100, 200, 150, and then to make them overlap a little bit, let's say legato 2. Let's just listen to this, see if it sounds good. Whoopee. Maybe this should be... I guess this is the kind of... I'm not sure if this is trick rate scale. If this is what would normally be... This would normally be... If this would normally be the rate of a play buff trick rate scale, let's just trace this for a bit. Here it is grain buff comes immediately before position. Uh, position, and that's rate. Yeah. Okay. Definitely need a new name for that trick rate scale. It's a really possible to remember name. Okay, anyways. And we should change maybe the attack to be 0 0.5, the release to be 0 0.5. Okay. Oh, panning is too extreme.
Oops, sorry about that. Why is it increasing so much in volume? Kind of sounds okay. But not great. I would not use this as it is right now. Oh, that's nasty. Oh. That's really nasty. Did I maybe fuck something up here? It actually did sound like... Uh, 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 lack of interpolation. Key size. Here. Sample rate. I guess it could theoretically change if I change the window size. I don't. Let's put it back. I think, well, first of all, I think I'm using the wrong grain now, but it's uh, a good test. So this rectangular window type is, is making me queasy. Also, I'm a little bit doubtful about this still. Let me just try and change this. That actually did help quite a lot, in my opinion. Let's make the window size bigger. Stretch it more.
It really has a... Mm. It changed the density of grains. And I don't think that's something that should be happening. This will randomize the phase of each of these overlapping grains. One minus could be the reasoning for that. If we change this back to one minus, definitely has a more correct uh, grain density. And then we move the one minus here, and then no, that's not definite. I do think it has to be like this. Try it a bit more. a tricky one uh, and I'm trying to be clever about something that someone else did and they probably did that because they were were or are m more clever than I am uh, so I'm probably just making this worse let's change the window type This is just getting worse, isn't it? Uh, let's see, up one, up, up. The amount of offset from the beginning of one FFT analysis analysis frame to the next measured in multiples of the analysis frame size. This can range between zero, one point zero and values close to but larger than zero point zero. And the default is 0 0.5, meaning each frame has a 50% overlap with the preceding slash following frames. Ugh, I really suck at FFT stuff. So much so that I actually have no idea if this is something that could be problematic. Let's try changing this to the default as well. Still sucks. Still sucks. Okay, what about the window type? Rectangular window, that was minus one, we tried that before. Zero, sign windowing, typically recommended. Hand window, typically recommended for analysis. Uh, hand window should be pretty good, but uh, let's try the sign.
Ah, okay, the window size actually really changes the density as well. Sounds nasty. Mm, I think I'm just gonna have to kill this one. I don't. Uh, I'm not too crazy about it. Um, or at least not what I've done with it. I seem to remember that I had um another synth for the uh, what's it called? It was another time stretch algorithm. which was released recently. I seem to remember that I put it in here. Sam Pluta time stretch. Ness stretch. Ness. Ness stretch. Super collider versions are here. Let's see. This is even a plugin. Super collider and Rust versions by Sam Pluta. Implements a phase randomized real FFT time stretch algorithm, the nest stretch, which splits the original sound file into nine discrete frequency bands and uses a decreasing frame size to correspond to increasing frequency, starting with a largest frame of 60 blah, blah, blah. Uh huh. The nest stretch is a refinement of Paul Neska's excellent Paul stretch algorithm. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Relation, super collider. Uh, actually use my fancy little. Uh, she's just asking if I've heard what this um, Paul Stretch algorithm sounds like on the, on the nonce uh, platform. And I don't think I have actually. Uh, it would be nice to compare it, yeah. I have a semi disassembled uh, nonce here, actually, uh, yeah. which uh, is worth a lot of money these days, I guess, because it contains these. Uh, digital audio uh, converters that you can't get anymore uh, because that's the post-apocalyptic time we live in. We can't get chips anymore. Um, I should actually use this, but I just put in, because that's another thing, you need a Raspberry Pi for these and uh, you can't buy those anymore either. Um, 
So it's dead. Uh, so someone don donates a Raspberry Pi for me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I should should make it put it back together again at some point because it really uh, I really love this. It's a uh, it's a fantastic project. Let's install time stretch. Just curious what the Lua code is doing anything surprising with the parameters synth um just tried to implement. This is something that I think I haven't been paying attention to when I was looking at this voices. Mm. So I guess you're meant to have a bunch of these playing uh, in parallel. So it has a voice argument which defaults to a hundred. So it's a hundred of these at the same time. Can that really be true? Array fill, max voices. Four. Ah, oh, okay. Hmm. Four voices. And stretch def, clear buffer, add command. So this was, let's see where it is, voices. No? I don't know. I'm abandoning this one, but I'm pretty sure that I, I've misunderstood something here. Uh, it looks like at least there's a voice parameter here that I'm not really haven't really uh, properly stolen. Let's see what else we have here. Pitch mix. Ah, so there's four voices, but then you can add in stretch factor of between one and 4,000. Default is 100. Which I think it's this one time straight. Stretch, stretch, okay, and stretch. Yeah, it's the same. Stretch equals stretch times stretch scale. Did I do that? Yeah. Okay, screw it. It's, uh, that's, I'm going to leave that for another day. So I just installed, uh, this time stretch thing. Tampluta, 
Alex Ness, Jim Altieri, um, they made this, and Paul Nesker, I guess, in some way, made this time stretch algorithm. It has a nice command line tool as well. I tr remember trying that. I don't remember tr if I tried the Super Collider version. Uh, would be pretty cool if it. Uh, oh, wait. File. Ah, okay. Oh yeah, it's just S. I think my brain is starting to uh, collapse a little bit. Time stretch is the 1952 Cadillac Fleetwood of extreme time stretching <laughs> algorithms. A big hulking and slow beauty. All calculate all calculations and audio processing are done in the language. Thus calculations move at a glacial pace. Uh, for a faster version that uses the server but doesn't sound quite as good, check out si Time Stretch 2. Okay, sounds like Time Stretch 2 is the one we go. Time Stretch 2 is synth def. Which looks a little bit like the one we just tried to uh, do, but more sophisticated. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. Guess I should just rip this out and steal it. Stretch. In file. And stretching. Okay, so this is basically a class for offline processing. I'm guessing this is a pretty heavy synth def. But, let's steal it. See? Um, uh, see? Add this. And it's been a while since I added one of these, let's see. What do I need to put in here? To put duration as first. Argument buff num change this to buffer huh? pretty good, pretty good, good. Okay, the buffer stretch iPad amp needs to go gate. Big env. Big env doing. Mm -hmm. Nest window, nice. Custom pseudo eugen or whatever. Mm -hmm. What are these envelopes doing though? Envgen, trick period. Okay. By golly, this is complex. Big Env. Oh, 
Okay, so this is the amplitude envelope, I guess. I'm gonna comment this out and comment this out. And I'm just gonna say mix.new out sick because mm, this out stuff is happening automatically in my system. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if I can add this now. Start pass, not defined. Start pass. Looks pretty pretty defined to me. Start pass, not defined. Why is this not defined? Looks very defined. Something else. Oh, num channels. That's something we need to figure out as well. Num channels. One. Yeah, it's taking this play buff one. Mm. Okay, I think this is mono. Oh, hey, Nathan just locked on. <laughs> hey, Nathan. It's good to see you. Trying to do some time stretching here. I'm ripping out. Oh god, I have something screwed up something here. Uh let's see. Let me retrace my steps a bit. Put the Gugak back on while we try to fix it. Fix this. Oh. Oh, routine cannot reset itself except by yield and reset. Nasty. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Let's see. Some funky thing going. That actually works. Something else has been screwed up. Copy this again.
Okay. <clears throat> non boolean in test all right i think it's time for me to wrap up soon because my brain is starting to collapse Seems my computer is starting to collapse as well. Hmm. I expect it in. That's for sure. Hmm. Oh well. Mm. Be pretty cool to try this though. Maybe we should just try the synth dev as it is. Add it like that. Copy the name. Oh, I've definitely done something weird to the server. Let me just reboot it. Warning there as well. Let's check that out afterwards. That's what it sounds like. I bet this is pretty heavy though, the synth. Um, I think there's a reason why they're doing this offline. Uh, okay. The sound we're going to test. And let's see. Buff num B. going on buff num defined gate is defined Strange. It is actually spawning this synth now. Not making any sound. This is a mono buffer and it expects a mono buffer. And start position. What's the deal with the start position? Mono stretch overlap zero. Being spawned here. Buff number, okay. 
copy dash buff num. Shouldn't think that would be necessary. Oh. Um. Now. Outchan buff num FFT size FFT intervals FFT max stretch duramult. Low pass, high pass. High pass, low pass. High pass, low pass. High pass, zero. High passing at zero. Mm, that doesn't seem right. Um, yeah, I'm going Low pass, high pass. Low pass, save 2500. High pass, 80. Guess it's not a kind of uh, time stretchy day today. Yeah, there's some fancy things going on here as well. Ah. Uh, okay, so each of these is actually a voice for the... Uh, this is actually what it says in the readme, I think. That it's dividing it into these frames. And that's what the low pass and high pass is. So this one frame going from 86 to 172. Uh, I think I have the... I have the command line tool. Ness. Stretch. Let's install it. Let's stretch H. Okay. It's going to take a while. I think it's going to run a Rust compiler now. Which should make my computer explode. Come on. Four more components to compile. Yep. Just one more. A few more. Uh, by the way, if anyone's still out there, um, which would surprise me, uh, but if anyone's still out there, we're going to have a, a Super Collider meetup next week on Wednesday. 
Uh, go check out. I think Scott is gonna post on the forum pretty soon. Uh, about it. Otherwise, it's on Facebook, and I'm gonna add it to the No Time website uh, soon as well. Anyways, here's the command line tool. Extreme dash f file. Let's see. I think I actually do have a sound samurai cup. Yep, have a samurai cup sample that we can use, and I'm going to use that. So let's say. Nest stretch stretch dash f sounds samurai cup dot wave Ooh, this is gonna take a while. Let's not do this. Stretch H duration say say dash S num slices. Let's put that down to like four. The remote, the duration multiplier. There, let's just say this is 10. Yeah, it's a bit better. Meantime, let's see some this when I'm running. Here into the drafts folder. So the system looks like it's. Creating all the synth devs now without any problems. Pretty great. Yeah. I think we're good. Mm hmm. Okay. We did get something done today. We did fix up the synth library a little bit. Also, also, this sounds a uh, samurai cup wave. Sounds Samurai Cup underscore ten dot wave the stretched version. Okay. Let's see C play. So this is I'm telling these son of a bitches that we respect the Japanese of this country who are honest businessmen. And yeah, this is the land of opportunity for legitimate business. That's from Samurai Cup, a very uh, impressive uh, American film. And now let's play the stretched version. No, I don't know. There it is.
This is still the intro music, I guess. Merchant. This is the uh, Ness Stretch Algorithm by uh, Sam Pluta and Alex Ross. Alex Ness, sorry. Sounds great. Sounds really, really great. I would love to have this in real time, but I guess that's uh, too much to ask for. Uh, but it really, uh, I really like this. And I'm not even, I haven't really got into the extreme territory yet. Uh, uh, I like anything extreme, I have to say. The Samurai Cup just sounds delicious. Sounds great. Yeah, so anyways. Uh, thanks for sticking around. If you are curious about the code that I wrote today, you can go to codeberg org slash slash mk dash synthlib and it's in there in the develop branch um, before I go I think I'm gonna update it and merge it into the main branch because this is uh, now a lot better okay I have some pretty cool tools for doing that. Listen to some more of this Gugak if you haven't already gotten sick of it. Um, I think I have a script in here. Update. I can run. I can't remember what does it do. The sc scripts. Update. Takes a version number. Tags it, commits it. Okay. Do we need anything else for old stretch goes in there? Staged. What's this? Oh. Components, grain shapes. Some white space, yep. Clouds. Space as well, I guess. Pole stretch was deleted. And... Okay. I can't remember the... N it's... 0 0.0 0.8 that's the latest mm. let's update the okay, scripts update uh, 0 0.0.9 boom But this is now updated to a new version. I think. Yep. And let's see. The change log should be. This as well.
Yeah. Not sure why it says unreleased. Uh, I'm using this tool called git cliff to generate the um, change log. And uh, I guess I haven't really gotten to know it that well yet. It's pretty smart. It takes the commit messages and then it's able to generate a um, change log from that. Do, 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 dash dash in it. Output change log. Create the change log, update proc file, update tags. This is probably the problem. It doesn't update the tags. It doesn't update the. It says unreleased here. I'm pretty sure that's because the tags are updated afterwards. Let's say it's manually. Git cliff, git cliff, dash dash output, change log, md. Now, yeah, now it says 0 0.0.9. And we can see the things that have been fixed. Renamed mk synthlib to m, right? We added Faust string models. We added this install Faust plugins method and help files. We fixed this x play buff stuff. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, let's commit this as well. Let's just uh, change this. Around. It updates the tags, then creates the change log, and then it updates the quark file. Commit version. Commit version changes. I guess it should commit the version changes first. No. That's the end here. Mm -hmm. Update quark file, update tags, change log. Yeah, I think this is correct. out main branch branches behind Should now have updated this main branch. Yep. Yep, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me, everyone. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Um, do uh, stop by the Super Collider meetup on Wednesday. Um, it's going to happen 7 p.m. Uh, my time. That's Oslo time. Let's see, time zones. This is something. I've been doing this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, planning international meetings for, you know, the entirety of the... Uh, pandemic and I still just completely suck 
at sharing time zones. Uh, let's see. Uh, date and time in current share. Let's share date and time in current time zone. Is this it? Uh, online? No. Anyways, time overview. <laughs> It's happening on Wednesday, uh, the whatever Wednesday is, uh, 7 p.m. in uh, and 7 p.m. in my time zone, which is GMT plus one, CET plus one, I guess. Um, yeah, stop by. It's gonna be nice. It's always nice. Uh, I'll see you around. <laughs>